Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Marvel Plus, the podcast devoted to all things MCU. My name is Brett Scott. I am your host, and this, my friends, is the show. This is getting crazy. This is day five in a row of podcasting, uh, specifically for Marvel Plus, and uh, it's it's been a feat. It has um, no no more so than you know. It, Evidenced by today, where I am doing it solo. I do not have a guest. I probably could have come up with a guest. Plenty of people have offered to to come back on and uh, you know make it work. Uh, but to be honest, I I didn't get to the episode until late in the day. Uh, I'm at work right now. It's incredibly hard to fit this you know podcast in with you know lining it up with other people's schedules. So you're just getting me this afternoon. Um, and what an episode though, to talk about what a fantastic episode. This is probably, and I'll just, you know, tell you right up front. This is probably my favorite episode of this season so far. One of the best episodes of the entire series so far. And, uh, it was just so good. So good. And I remember really enjoying the, captain carter episode i think it was the first episode in season one and then also enjoying the guardians of the multiverse episode with captain carter it's just a character that i didn't assume would be amazing but is absolutely amazing and pulls off you know the action sequences and whatnot in the same manner as as the steve rogers that we know the captain america that we know um it's, you know, they, they don't like attempt to like feminize it or weaken it or make it like they don't try to make her in any way inferior to Steve Rogers. Like she's not just like another, you know, um, like a lesser version. She's an absolute equal version of Captain America. And it's phenomenal. And this episode, it just it gave me what I love. It gave me what I love in the MCU, which is grounded stories, stories about people who are, you know, human or, or enhanced somewhat, but not super powered, not people that are able to fly and shoot things from their hands. And while I love mutants and X-Men, um, I, I love that sort of thing. I still love the boots on the ground, uh, scrappy characters, the most, the ones that fight with their fists and their feet, um, and weapons. I still enjoy that more than I enjoy the the, the super powered fighting. Um, so this episode, pairing up Captain Carter with Black Widow through the entire episode and just their extensive like martial arts and using different weapons and and Captain Carter using her shield in so many different ways. I thought it was just oh man, it, it, it's like I said, it's it's everything I love about the Captain America trilogy and Cap's appearances and and all films and series. It's all of that, and I couldn't be happier with that that kind of an episode. They they brought in some heart with bringing Steve Rogers back into the story, making it still about Peggy and Steve's love story, um, and they gave us kind of this other universe version of the winter soldier storyline with it being instead of cap and bucky we have peggy and steve and it's it's just interesting like like the the through the years storyline just like captain america you know this, this person from her past pops up she didn't know was still alive um trained and and or at least weaponized by the russians uh bringing in all that black widow stuff which i i unabashedly unashamedly love the black widow film and i don't know why other than the fact that it maybe came out at the wrong time does not get more love than it does because i think it is fantastic one of my favorite especially in the past uh few years of, of marvel stuff one of my favorite films absolutely loved it because it's everything i like right it's a lot of melee fighting it's it's on the ground storytelling street level stuff uh i like that i like stuff that deals with uh, espionage and spy craft and all that stuff you've heard me talk about it a million times on the podcast that is my jam that's my favorite part of the mcu the stuff that doesn't rely on power so much but more so relies on character uh character driven stories and 
melee fighting, you know, no superpowers other than maybe some uh, superhuman enhancements. Uh, but man, yeah, so great story. Let's just get let's get into kind of the meat of the story here. We get this same Captain Carter that we've met in, in previous episodes of What If. She's now back in her own universe where the, the Watcher sent everyone back to their own universes and timelines. And uh, she's doing what essentially Captain America did in the 616 timeline. You know, she's part of the Avengers. She's, uh, you know, she's on a team stopping, you know, going through the same like trials and tribulations, very similar or, or same battles with the same villains, uh, just slightly tweaked. Uh, but in this version instead of bucky coming back which bucky is fully aged into an older man here he's uh like the secretary of defense or something at this point which i love it would i think it would make him like like 90 years old or something at this point but whatever um he's a spry 90 uh even even attempts to jump in the fight himself a couple times but i love this other universe i i love it i love how everything plays out um and now instead of Bucky being uh, kept alive and kept young by the Russians uh, and weaponized. Now it's Steve Rogers, um, an unpowered Steve Rogers that's still in the Hulkbuster suit that we saw in What If Season 1. Um, now he's been kind of uh, weaponized by the Red Room, the same people who uh, trained uh, and raised Black Widow and her sister. And uh, it's just awesome. I love this stuff, man. I love this government uh conspiracy espionage stuff it's so damn good it makes for great storytelling um but we've got you know he, he's not trained but he's weaponized by the red room kind of hypnotized by them almost like the winter soldier was by the the uh, people within the the russian government and he's basically uh j he's just a weapon he's kind of like a mindless weapon where they control what he does uh they control what the suit does the suit keeps him alive so he can't leave the suit he can never leave the suit again he's he's attached to it um for better or for worse and obviously in this story for, for mostly for worse uh but and much like in winter soldier you've got the captain america surrogate which is captain carter in this story trying to appeal to the humanity of this character this steve rogers and trying to remind that character what they meant to each other and that they are not this person that has been doing all of these things uh these terrible things throughout the uh decades committing war crimes killing mass amounts of people through the years and that's the story and it's kind of black widow saying you know he's he's been taken over by the red room and there's nothing you can do we've got to take him out everyone else kind of saying like we've we've got to stop this guy just like they did with winter soldier and and captain carter still believing in her friend or her love interest in this case and it's a great story it's a great story and in the end you know i wouldn't say the end but you know with the end of the episode it's still not fully resolved because he's still kind of mind controlled and we don't know exactly what ends up happening when it plays out. But I do love that final sequence when he decides to, it seems like he decides to sacrifice himself in order to take out the red room. I thought that was fantastic. I love bringing all this stuff back, like stuff that we can't access in the six one six anymore. The, the red room, which has already been destroyed in, in our universe. And, uh, 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 just, just all these things, all these things that, that, uh were used in earlier storytelling that are no longer available i love being able to return to those in these alternate realities so you get this story playing out and just the action is so damn good so when they go to kind of uh basically they're trying to protect the hulkbuster suit and steve rogers inside of it and they try to get him to the red room so that they can resolve this whole thing uh they go over to russia and they're searching for this base and uh, end up running into Melina, which is uh, Black Widow's stand-in mother, right? Uh, the operative that was put in place. And I love that she's just a straight-up bad guy in this. Not like in the Black Widow film where she, she pretends to be and takes a turn and is actually helping them out. But she's 
actually a baddie, like a terrible baddie in this. She's kind of running the show uh, with the Black Widows. I was I was kind of upset to see uh, or to not see um, her sister in this. Uh, I, I would have loved to seen Black Widow's sister show up. Um, Yelena, one of my favorite new characters in the MCU. And I, I, yeah, I feel like she definitely could have been involved in this, but I don't, I, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why they didn't. Um, but it still worked very well. Um, I, I love that they get over there and then they're attacked. Uh, I, I love the American, uh, quote unquote, American town that the Russians have created to, uh, to, to emulate like what would be an American town to, uh, to practice taking it over or attacking it or what have you. Um, all these robots. It reminds me of uh, old episodes of the Twilight Zone or um, Star Trek or something like that, where, where they go into a place and uh, it, it looks like this beautiful American town, this old time, I don't know, 50s American, 40s, 50s American town. And they go in and it turns out that it's all androids. It's all robots that are just walking around saying, Typical American things like apple pie and baseball and um, I love freedom and things like that. I love all that stuff. It's so damn good. Um, just uh, imagining how the Russians viewed us uh, all about commercialism. They were like, I love to buy things. I love shopping. Like, I loved all the sayings that the, that the robots were saying. Uh, but it, the, all the androids turn on them and just the, the outright like mayhem that ensues with them battling this city full of androids, right? American looking androids. Um, but you know, not going too kid unfriendly because just like in the old X-Men, the animated series, like it, it's okay to just completely mutilate and destroy things as long as they're robots and not human beings. Right? So, they, they they can be relentless in their pursuit of like destruction. Uh, so they they they're taking out these robots and everything. They end up the, the showdown with Melina and the widows. Ah, oh, just seeing the widows again was fantastic. I love this. This whole episode was bad ass. Um, yeah, yeah. What a cool story. Um, and I love that we keep returning to to Captain Carter because, as I said, not not. I wasn't expecting uh, for her to be one of my favorite characters to come out of this What If series, but she absolutely is. Like Now I know anytime she shows up, it's going to be a badass episode. Uh, so far, it holds true, and I imagine it will continue to do so because they alluded to the fact that um, there's more to her story. Uh, where at the end of this, she's going to go off and, and believing that Steve is still alive somewhere, that she's going to go track him down and she's going to try to save him. Um, naturally, as Cap would with Bucky, uh, as it happened in, in our 616 universe. Uh, but as she's about to take off, and Black Widow's going to join her in her pursuit, they're going to go have their own buddy cop adventures. Um, right at the last minute, she gets sucked into a portal, which even surprises the Watcher, who is watching nearby. He doesn't understand what's going on. So that leads us to believe that something else crazy is happening, just like towards the end of Season 1, when all these universes like uh, started to collapse in on each other. Obviously, it's going to be something different this time. They're not going to use Ultron. It's got it's got to be something different. And hopefully, it's something that, that is alluding to Secret Wars and, and what's to come in the MCU later. Um, rather than before, it, it kind of felt like they were alluding to like just like the multiverse and and Kang and all that. Um, as we've talked about many times, we don't know what's going to happen with the, with the Kang storyline. Uh, but there's plenty of other stuff coming up that has to do with the multiverse, uh, namely Secret Wars, which I'm very excited for. I'm sure most people are very excited for. And we have several years left to wait, like three plus years, three or four years to wait for Secret Wars. Still don't know what the Avengers 5 uh, untitled film is going to be called. No longer called the Kang Dynasty, uh, if reports are uh, accurate. But, very exciting stuff on the horizon. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm reinvigorated for the MCU. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but um, like I was always all in, but now I'm like excited. Like excited for what's to come. We've got, we've got Echo, which looks amazing. Um, we're going to see how this, this what if story plays out. Uh, we've got 
one movie next year, which I think is going to make all the money, bringing Marvel back to its glory. Deadpool 3 is going to make all the money. My prediction, highest grossing R-rated film of all time. Mark my words. Remember that I said it. Deadpool 3 will be the first billion dollar rated R film. It's going to be it's going to be phenomenal. Uh, going to make all the money there. But anyway, she gets stuck in this other universe. We don't know what the hell is going on, though. Um, she gets stuck in this other universe. She sees two people there. I, I'm not sure who one of them was, but one of them was definitely Scarlet Witch. Um, and so who knows what world that is. Now, it may have been strange. It may have been strange, not strange Supreme. It almost looked like that zombie strange Supreme. I, I could be wrong. I could be way off. It was like, it was a quick scene. Um, you guys can tell me if you know who it is. Um, I don't think it's that consequential. But the fact that Scarlet Witch is there and they're talking about they need her to save their queen. No idea what that's referencing. Like, who is their queen? What universe is this? Why is there a queen? I, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm intrigued, and I know it's going to play out in the rest of these What If episodes. I think, much like last season, uh, this is my prediction, it's going to start to all converge together again, uh, ending in like another Guardians of the Multiverse storyline at the end. Uh, where maybe we'll get some different versions, though. Like Captain Carter, I think, is a mainstay, but maybe they bring in some other versions. Maybe we don't get Party Thor, right? Which I'd be completely fine with. I, I really don't ever need to see Party Thor again. Um, but Bring in some other cool uh, multiverse people. Maybe bring in uh, the uh, other people from this season, right? Bring in uh, bring in Nebula from the first episode. Bring her in. Uh, bring Tony Stark in. Bring bring Tony Stark in there. Uh, probably going to bring Gamora back, I'm guessing, because they brought her into this season as well. Uh, but exciting stuff, dude. I think this is going to be a, a really cool what if season two. Uh, like I said, I wasn't expecting much at all from it, but every single episode has surprised the hell out of me and I've enjoyed very much. I'd love to hear what you guys think too. You can always chime in. Um, you can either, you know, send a email, uh, Marvel plus podcast at gmail.com. Uh, you can hit me up on social medias at real Brett Scott on TikTok, uh, Instagram X, uh, I guess it's called now. And yeah, you just reach out, talk to me. I love talking this stuff. Find me on Facebook. Come join the Marvel Plus Facebook group. There's about 60 of us maybe in there uh, right now and still growing. I'd love to have more of you in there to continue discussing this stuff um, outside of the podcast and actually get some back and forth going. Uh, but a lot of people who are really passionate about the MCU in that group. So come join it, please, if you're interested. Uh, just search Marvel Plus Podcast in groups on Facebook. and. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you go check out the Patreon, we've got uh, all kinds of stuff over there. Uh, ex uh, video versions of the podcast, including this one you're listening to right now. Uh, we've got uh, uh, kind of re-reviews or uh, retro reviews of the early MCU films over there, like Iron Man, Iron Man 2, uh, Incredible Hulk, working our way through those. And a um, bunch of bonus episodes. And that. So go check that out. Um, what else? What else? Uh, lots more what if coming. So please, if you're not already subscribed to Marvel Plus, do so. Um, stay tuned. I'm doing a, a, an episode every day until what if is over. And then we're going to jump into Echo in a couple weeks. Cannot wait for Echo. It looks so damn good. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry I got to cut this one short. Uh, I got to get back to work. Uh, but, but I wanted to talk about this episode, uh, whether I had a guest or not, because of how much I enjoyed it. I think it was, like I said, the best episode yet. Um, one of the best episodes of the entire series, both seasons. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, hit me up and um, you can always send emails, uh, questions, comments, concerns, or if you want to be a guest on the show to discuss something with me, um, Marvel plus podcast at gmail.com hit up the Patreon. Like I said, patreon.com slash Marvel plus um, t-shirts at T public dot com slash marvel plus you can find all this stuff in the description below i should start probably putting a link to the uh, marvel plus facebook group in there as well but anything i talk about on here uh will always be linked in the show notes so 
just check that uh, before you go and stick around. I'll be back tomorrow with another episode that I'm sure will blow me away as much as these other five have. Yeah. Thank you guys so much, as always, for sticking with me. Thanks for listening to these episodes each day. Um, I know it's the, the holiday season and we got a lot of stuff going on, but a lot of you are still tuning in and I really appreciate that. So um, I'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you so much. As always, my name is Brett Scott. And this has been Marvel Plus.